Okay, folks, we're, uh, we're going to get started. Um, good afternoon and uh, welcome on behalf of uh, Albany County Executive Dan McCoy, uh, who could not be here, was just called away, uh, but uh, he is holding, this is the second in uh, three public hearings to uh, solicit uh, input for the Shared Services Initiative Plan that uh, we were required to submit to the Albany County Legislature, and we did that on August 1st. Uh, so in order to comply with the state mandated initiative, we solicited the input of all the municipalities and the school districts in the county. This is an opportunity to engage the citizens of the county as well as to uh, get comment on the now draft plan. Just a moment, uh, conducting this public hearing will be the Rockefeller Institute of uh, Government, which actually issued our draft report, and I will uh, introduce uh, our panel uh, momentarily. Just a reminder that if you uh, would like to comment during this public hearing, uh, you must sign in on the sheet, uh, which is uh, to your right uh, on the table that, uh, that, that Matt is, is holding that up. We need that uh, for the stenographer. Want to make sure I acknowledge uh, some folks uh, that, are, that are here. First and foremost, we want to thank uh, Colony Town Supervisor Paula Mahan uh, for, uh, for making this uh, facility available. I uh, certainly want to thank uh, the other members uh, that are uh, here, representative from, from Colony, uh, from the town. Thank you uh, for, the, uh, for the welcome and all of the help uh, today. need to uh, make sure that, uh, that I recognize our uh, members of our uh, Albany County Legislature as well. We have our chair, uh, Sean Ward, who is joining us, and we have legislators Paul Bergdorf, Frank Moriello, and Mark Grimm. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the panel. Uh, to my uh, immediate left is a consultant who has been uh, working with us and working with the Rockefeller Institute, uh, Tom Citrino. We have the president of the Rockefeller Institute, Jim Malatras. And to his left, we have Mike McLaughlin, Albany County uh, Director of Policy and Research. And to his left is Matt Cannon, the Economic Development Project Manager. Uh, as we start, welcome to Assemblyman John McDonald, who has, uh, has now uh, joined us. I am going to uh, turn this over to uh, Jim Malatras. Uh, at this point, he's going to uh, explain a little bit about the format, but one reminder again, if you'd like to speak during the public hearing, please sign in the sheet. When the time uh, comes for public comment, what I will do is I will read the name. I will ask you to uh, come up uh, to the center uh, of the, the seating to the aisle, make it easier for the stenographer, and then you can uh, make your comment or address your questions at that time. All right, Jim. Good evening. Can you hear me without the microphone? I'm going to go without the microphone. I feel like I'm a jazz lounge singer with that microphone. Uh, I'm Jim Alatris. I was brought on by County Executive McCoy to work on the state-mandated shared services plan, and I thank everybody who we've bothered or hassled or talked to over the last couple of months. Um, it's been a very short time frame, so people made themselves available on holidays and weekends and things, so we appreciate that. We're going to go through a very brief overview of what the plan is, the, uh, the draft plan, and then we'll get to your questions, comments, and concerns so we can help improve the plan as we're trying to finalize it by September 15th. So this is a pretty quick turnaround, so thank you all for coming on a uh, a, a stormy August night. So the approach that we were tasked with was a bottom-up approach. This wasn't what does the Rockefeller Institute think or what do others think, but what do the local municipalities think themselves, what do the school districts think. We spoke to every local government as well as every school district. We didn't have a chance. We had a discussion at our first public hearing Given the time, we couldn't talk to everybody in the local government, but we talked to every chief executive, and they often brought their teams with them. So we had robust discussions, uh, Tom and I, um, uh, with every government. So the bottom-up approach, and it was about consensus building. Where were the common areas there where people agreed? If things weren't coming together, we kind of put that off to the side, which I'll talk about, some areas that were still open. But we tried to get consensus. And then the other idea that the county executive, he wanted lots of ideas. So we reached far and wide, um, and we tried a lot of different things. And the, uh, not overheard, uh, overhead, uh, we really wanted to focus on the overhead of uh, local governments where we could find savings 
not people. That was one of the areas that most of the local governments as well as the county executive said, we want to talk about workforce, we want to talk about paper clips and things that we could save. So the first draft, which we just, was just released last week, we found a conservative estimate. We're very conservative. Some other plans that counties have been putting forward have very significant savings. We've been going through them. This is very conservative. We think this is within the realm of the possible. At least $6.8 million of savings if the plan is fully adopted and fully implemented. This plan is an opt-in plan. And what do I mean by that is the county, and we're not telling local governments what to do. If a local municipality wants to opt into some portion of this, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. So the county executive was really key on that piece. This isn't to tell local governments what to do, but if there's a service that a local government wants to, wants to participate in, then it's for them. So we think the savings will go up um, and grow as municipalities opt into the program. The $6.8 million isn't done in a vacuum. We've already identified at least $15 million of savings that the county and local governments have already saved in the same time period. So this is $6.8 million on top of $15 million of savings that the local governments and the county have already found and started to implement. This is, those aren't planned savings, those are actually implemented savings. And this is sort of how it breaks down. In the draft plan, $2.5 million of savings have been agreed to in concept. And then there's an additional $4.3 million, what we call potential savings. Those are areas, which we'll talk about in a second, where there was great interest. We just haven't had a chance to work it all out yet or get consensus on everything. So that's what we're taking this month by talking to the public, as well as uh, working with the local governments to see if we can get more consensus on that remaining $4.3 million. So let me go through sort of the areas uh, of the plan. We broke it down into about four sections. The first section is shared specialty equipment and personnel services. How can local governments um, use more of the equipment that they have and personnel that they have together? This was an area of interest. Um, in many cases, Towns, villages, cities are already doing this. That's a great thing. So the first part was an agreement on creating a county-wide centralized uh, shared specialty equipment program. If you go to our report, there was a chart of equipment that municipalities had and a, a chart of equipment that municipalities need. So for instance, it sounds trivial, but it's real savings to school districts, for instance. Many of the schools said, we need cherry pickers. Why do we need a cherry picker? We need to replace our light bulbs in the gym every year. That's a $5,000 cost. Well, instead of spending $5,000, some of the local governments have cherry pickers. So they're going to share equipment. That's just savings for folks in providing better service. That's the first part. So the county will create a county-wide sort of database so if you need something, a municipality can call up the county or call other local governments and say, do you have this piece of equipment that we can borrow? That's the first part. And if you go to our report, it sort of lists out some of it. It's not dispositive or exhaustive, but it shows a sort of example or illustration of what can be offered and what people are looking for. And some of this, and just on that first point, some of the equipment's actually quite expensive, right? Uh, Forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar piece of equipment that you use once a year could be better saved by sharing. The second piece was shared personnel through centralized process organized by the county. Same concept. There are certain things that local governments need and use, but they only need it every once in a while. How many lawyers are in the room? Show your hands. Phil, you don't count. All right, let's pick on lawyers because only Phil's a lawyer. For instance, many municipalities say we have a lot of legal services, but sometimes they're specialized legal services. So what we have to do is go out and bid a contract for specialized legal services. That costs more money because you're not doing it at scale, you're only doing it once or twice. Well, the county now will offer a service, will say, the town of Colony has a lawyer, a really brilliant land use lawyer, or the village of Altamont has a really good agriculture lawyer. Let's share the people that we already have, not get rid of people. Share the people we, and resources that we have so you're not just spending extra money for some of those services. That could go across the board. There's lots of these types of things. School districts particularly, 
were looking for certain services to work with their towns, villages, and cities on snow removal and other things in emergency circumstances. So this will be a database that they can go to and say, I have this specialty problem. I have this special problem. How do you have anything in the county that we can use to help? So that's shared specialty equipment and personnel services. The second piece was joint purchasing of services and materials. This, again, is a broad thing. There's no specific one area, but this fits all sorts of areas. Uh, I say it jokingly, but paper clips and office supplies, that's one area. IT equipment and software, it's very expensive for local governments to use IT and, uh, and software equipment. Many of our bigger towns, Town of Colony, the county, the city of Albany, have more sophisticated software. Well, we're gonna come up with a program where they'll share those sorts of um, IT services and other things with people who want it. They're, then again, it's people opting in to those equipments and agreements. Fuel's another one of those areas too. Many of the local governments are already on the state fuel contract, for instance, which saves a lot of money, but there's gonna be all those types of things which we'll enumerate in the final uh, thing. Next slide, please. Then, I'll go quickly, there were some specific areas of consolidation of duplicative functions. Notice that we say functions, not people, uh, duplicative functions. One area where there was considerable interest was um, joint maintenance or shared maintenance of vehicles. Um, school districts particularly uh, raised this issue and some of our smaller local governments uh, have raised this issue too where the county can provide the service or some of the other bigger municipalities can help provide the service because it becomes a big cost uh, for folks. The second piece is more specific, and I know some of our folks from Burner here tonight will probably talk about it. Uh, what was also agreed to was the consolidation of the Albany County and Burn Department of Public Works. Uh, we'll go through those savings in a second. The third piece was uh, uh, sharing interpretation translation services. Sounds Wow, that's such a small thing. But this is actually a big, not just cost, but big time suck for many local governments. There's many laws and rules now from the federal government to the state that requires the translation of all public documents into multiple languages. If you're a small municipality, there's not many folks that are speaking Mandarin Chinese, but that could be, a, by the way, uh, an example of something that you need a service on. The county will help coordinate that. Um, Sheriff Apple mentioned that and law enforcement uh, materials, there's sort of free services through the FBI. And there could be other things that we're going to explore. So that's one area where the county and local governments will uh, share. The other piece, where do we live off, is the consolidate, the last two pieces are smaller pieces of the, cons they want to consolidate the civil service functions uh, within the county. This is specific to the city of Albany, as well as the records clerk position uh, from the city of Albany into the county. So that is sort of consolidation and shared services uh, at duplicative functions. The final piece uh, that we found uh, uh, considerable savings is on energy efficiency. Um, in many cases, and the town of Colony is one of those examples, there's a move to high energy efficiency lighting called LED lighting. Not only does it last longer, it actually saves considerable amount of money. And there's also been other uh, energy efficiency and energy reduction pro uh, programs. In addition to health, workers' comp, uh, liability, and those types of things, energy cost, energy consumption is one of the greatest costs to local governments. So we're going to do two proposals that were agreed to uh, by in the draft plan. The first is something called the creation of a community choice aggregation. I don't know why they make it sound as boring and non-descriptive as possible, but really what this is, is all the municipalities are going to join together with the school districts, and they're gonna use their leveraging power as one sort of government to lower their energy costs. That way they have buying power over energy companies. And Westchester County was one of the counties that actually decided to do this. This was just changed in law or regulation by the state. And 17 out of, or 14 out of 17 of their municipalities signed in. Local governments don't have to sign up for this. They can opt out, as well as residents and business people. If they don't, businesses don't wanna be in the program, they don't have to be. They can keep going to National Grid or wherever they go. They found at least a million dollars of savings 
to residents alone in Westchester County, and they think they're going to, and their, their projections are a 20% reduction of their overall energy costs, not only for the local governments, but for residents. So this is like a double um, benefit. It's going to save money on the local government side, which is the taxpayer side, as well as just direct resident savings. Your overall um, energy bill can come down. And then what the county's going to do is uh, work with the municipalities to put more LED lights up around the county. One of the things they've, uh, we, we found when talking to folks in the communities are utility companies aren't always the easiest uh, companies to deal with. I think many of you probably have experienced that yourself, by like calling the energy uh, utility company. The county will organize a process by which they will work to uh, help facilitate the implementation uh, and, and uh, 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 installation of LED lightings, which are saving enormous amount of uh, dollars across the county. And the first thing, if I can just rewind just ever so, the state has agreed to come in and work with the county and any municipality that wants to do an energy audit. So they'll go in and they'll say, where are areas of money that we can save? And the best part we like about this is there's often state dollars that go along with that. If you do weatherization and other things, the state will actually underwrite some of those costs. So the county's going to do that process first and then move forward with some of these other things. So those areas are where we found uh, a consensus of, uh, of over more than $2 million. And the second part, these are future areas that we're still looking at. And some of these actually have significant taxpayer savings and efficiencies attached if we can come uh, to resolution by September 15. The first piece is debt refinancing. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but really important. The all debt in the county uh, equals about $1 billion. You're paying that back at interest. Uh, what we're finding is, like many communities, some municipalities have refinanced some of their debt. Debt interest rates are much lower now in government, in bonds, in the bond market, and other places. But some have not. So if we can lower the over, your overall debt from 4% a year to 0.88% a year, that's just savings to the taxpayer debt service that we're now going through municipality by, by municipality. And if we find those savings, the county will come up with a program in order to help local governments just lower their overall cost of debt. It's not the most exciting proposal in the world, but that's just, to us, free money. Why pay more when you can pay less? The county will help facilitate working with lenders and others to try to lower that overall debt rate. Again, a billion dollars in overall debt, you're paying a lot of debt service. You're paying more interest sometimes than you are paying on the principal. This helps. And if you put it in real terms, it's interesting. Uh, the town of Bethlehem, for instance, just refinanced some of their debt to a savings of $2.3 million. They just moved the ledger from one side, one lender to another, saved $2.3 million. That's one area. Uh, the next area is the creation of a county uh, uh, health consortium. There's been proposals done in the past. This is basically using the collective buying power, purchasing power of all municipal governments to lower their overall health costs, health care costs. The key piece to this, which was important to all of the participating governments as well as the school districts, first of all, there's many programs. BOCES, for instance, offers a consortium for school districts. But there's still more savings to be had. This doesn't change people's overall health benefits. That was the important thing. Or their co-pays or changing people's coverage. So that was an important thing. This is just using your collective purchasing power. We're working through some rules which are uh, problematic, not of creation of local governments, but of creation of state law. If you're under 50 employees in a local government, you have different rules and you can't participate. So we're trying to find workarounds and ways of creating a countywide health consortium, which the county will help facilitate in order to over, uh, lower people's overall health care costs without lowering or reducing their services, which was key to what we were looking at. Um, the third area is Workers' Compensation and Liability Insurance Consortia. This is uh, not something that's been worked through yet. These are two other areas which drive a significant cost to governments. And we're looking through, again, ways of using our collective purchasing power to lower those overall costs without reducing anybody's benefits. 
Then there's a couple of more which I'll go quickly through, uh, which you can see. We are working with uh, some of our local governments. Not everybody was interested in consolidated dispatch operations, 911 and emergency services. Uh, there was some uh, desire to consolidate municipal payroll operations within the county, either through software or shared personnel. Um, a creation of a joint enterprise research planning system, which if you have questions about it, Tom is your guy, and he will answer every question. Only the hard ones go to Tom. I take the easy questions only um, because he gets paid the big dollars and I don't. Then there's a creation of a county workforce database, which kind of goes along with the shared personnel services. It's helpful to know what you have in order to share those personnel services. But there's a lot of issues to work through on that, privacy concerns and those types of things. Then some other specific energy issues, uh, an anaerobic digester program, especially with our sewer systems, and maybe expand that. A, an anaerobic digester sounds sort of strange. They look kind of strange. They're these big compartments. They turn waste into energy. Um, they turn sewage waste into electricity. If you have byproduct from like yogurt factories and other factory products, you could take that waste instead of putting it through your sewer system or just dumping it in a dump somewhere. It actually converts it into electricity, which saves overall costs for uh, taxpayers in the county or your local governments, as well as is more environmentally friendly. It does more for uh, waste management and those types of things. There's some capital upfront costs. We're exploring if there's state grants to help underwrite some of those costs so that local governments aren't paying for it. But even if you have to pay for it, the overall cost savings in the long term work out for the ratepayers. And then the energy providers, these are our special assistants there. And uh, finally, we're working on uh, a better coordination of our emergency, especially our specialty emergency response personnel uh, uh, with some uh, SWAT team trainings and our tactics officers. In this more complex and dangerous society, uh, we have to do a better job of managing and uh, sharing our knowledge and uh, training practices, so we're also working towards that. So what we've agreed to, here's the breakdown on the left-hand side. It sort of breaks, we sort of forecasted early on what the savings would be. And then sort of the open questions, we have a range, a lot of TBDs, because we're working through those issues. If all of it sort of gets done in some form or another, we think it's $6.8 million, which is conservative. Um, uh, at max, we think it could be 10 million, but right now, this is where we think uh, this proposal will fall. It's not just about the savings. I think what was interesting uh, to many of our elected officials and local governments was just better delivery of services to communities, access to more equipment, which makes it a better uh, model for taxpayers, not only just on the savings side, but also on the, uh, the service delivery side. The next thing we have to do, if you want to go to the next one, Mike. This is sort of the process that we're going, uh, we're under right now. We just submitted the draft plan, which was required by law, August 1st to the county legislature. They took a lot of notes. I see them all sitting there with tough questions. The, now we have public hearings, which we're going through right now. I think we have one more public hearing. The county legislature gets to review the plan and offer a report or comments to us. Uh, in, in, in fact, what we've enjoyed about this process, we've already getting a lot of comments from local governments and others throughout the county, which has been actually enormously helpful in strengthening the plan. Um, the county doesn't ha the county legislature doesn't have to vote, nor they, they don't vote on the plan, but they do get to offer up their comments. The panel, led by the county executive, can modify the plan based on comments. And by the way, we are modifying the plan as we go along now. We're getting a lot of comments and we're modifying. Um, and then the final vote by the panel has to be September 15th. Each proposal, it's not an up or down vote on the whole thing. This is clear to know. Local governments can, and school districts can opt out. The county executive, first of all, school districts didn't have to be included. The county executive and other local officials included the school districts because we thought that was an important piece to work through. So no one has to vote on everything up or down. If there's certain provisions that a village or a city doesn't like, they can opt out and say, we're not participating in that, or we're going to participate in that. That's why I call this a sort of opt-in plan, a bottom-up approach, what works for people, what they're going to opt into. And then by September 15th, 
People will vote on it. Either you get enough consensus uh, to vote on an overall plan, and then we have to prevent, present the final plan uh, by October 15th in a public setting. This time frame wasn't of our making. This is sort of how the law kind of worked out. So by October 15th, after it's adopted, then we present what those plans are, and then they go into the implementation phases um, thereafter. So that is enough rambling on for me. Thank you. If you have questions or comments, that would be great. You can use, you can, you want to use the mic? No, I could just stand. Yeah. What are we doing here? I'm just going to speak. You're going to speak, okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure, sure. If I can't hear you, I'll just let you know. Okay, thanks. Uh, my name is uh, Gerard Chartier. I'm a resident of the township of Bern, Albany County. I reside at 204 Duck Hill Road. Voorheesville, New York, 12186. Um, I'd like to speak to two issues. Uh, first, renewable energy. I, I want to note just from the summary uh, of the slides the potential for other energy saving uh, ideas in, a, in addition to anaerobic digesters. Uh, renewable energy, particularly shared or community solar, uh, no longer is solar tied to a rooftop or a municipal site. Solar farms or gardens are being built in the capital district by colleges, uh, local school districts, and municipalities. Um, a savings of 20% of aggregate energy costs is typical. Um, a second area would be uh, using uh, electric vehicles, utility vehicles, cars, service trucks, supervisors, cars, whatever, all operating within the county boundaries can easily uh, accommodate the range that they need. It's another opportunity to uh, save uh, money, potentially, and also to be green. So that's the first area. The second uh, area I want to speak to uh, is the consolidation of the Burn Highway Department with the County Highway Department. Uh, I'm opposed to this consolidation and note that only Burn was identified or singled out for consolidation. Uh, Burn is part of the Heldeberg Hill Towns. There's four rural highway departments in that area. And I'd be surprised to see a report, a final report, that did not look at all four of these rural highway departments in the same manner. However, I'm, I'm strongly supportive of the continuation and expansion of shared services between the Hilltown Highway Departments and the County DPW. First, uh, I don't want to say anything derogatory about the County Highway Department. Um, when you're in the rural areas of Albany County, you see that the County Highways are in first class condition. And I, speak, I think that speaks to the planning and the competence of the DPW. Uh, that's not an issue uh, in my mind. However, the Highway Department of Burn Township is also well run, and the current superintendent has shown his ability to manage his budget and his staff. He's also extremely responsive to citizen requests, and in my experience, quickly addresses problems that come up. He's also using social media to communicate with the public about where his crews are working and making the public aware of dangerous travel conditions. I'm concerned that the consolidation with the county DPW would remove this close connection and knowledge of local roads and that the county would not be as responsive to local citizens. Thank you.
thank you. Uh, on energy efficiency, if you have ideas, send them our way. Solar farms, co-gen, even weatherization activities. Co-gen, C-O-G-E-N, co-generation on facilities, um, and other types of things are all savers. We've run into, so if you have expertise, there's been many folks in our municipalities that have expertise on certain projects they've been doing. We've learned things. For instance, school districts want to do solar. They don't put solar on their roofs because the roofs are too old. Some of their buildings are 50, 60 years old. So they're saying you can't put a solar panel on your roof. So we're going to do a solar field like many other governments are doing. But we don't have space because we have ball fields for our kids, our students. So can we work with our local municipality in the town to put our solar field in chair? Well, law prohibits a school district from putting their solar panels on a non-school district because they're like their own government, right? They're their own taxing entity. So we're trying to work out arrangements with local governments and school districts. So it's the towns versus the schools. So those types of ideas are very important and exciting. And like we said before, there's often state grants that come with it or federal grants. So take the money while they give it to you, right? So, and on the uh, highway piece, we hear you. That's one of those issues that we're going to work through. There's been other actual municipalities that raise. There's going to be other municipalities on the table that they're going to be talking about their consolidated efforts too. But these comments are very important to move the process forward, so we appreciate it. Uh, good evening. Uh, I stand before you as uh, um, someone who is affiliated with uh, the last uh, study of shared services that the Rockefeller Institute did, which was back in the mid-1990s, a moment on uh, history lesson. Um, I hope you've had recourse to that study. Uh, the Rockefeller Institute at that time headed up uh, a New York State commission on the capital region. And uh, I, think, I think by comparison, where that commission took on the entire region, I very much like the idea of uh, a program which is based on, on counties. One of the principal findings of our study, your study, uh, was that county government is regional government. There's need for regionalization beyond counties, but counties can do a, a fine job at coordinating, consolidating, avoiding duplication and the like. So I think that's a very important development. Uh, a second important development is, is the opt-in idea. Um, greatly minimize the politics, uh, the hassling, the conflict, uh, dragging the whole thing down with a, with a uh, a few uh, municipalities of, of objecting, or even one objecting, you don't like it, opt out. Um, and, and a third uh, feature that struck me as very important is, is uh, the practicality of all this. I mean, focusing on, on equipment and services uh, is, is an excellent idea. Uh, focusing on, on functions is also a very good idea. So, from what I've seen, I, I like those three features. I hope you've had time to compare the report you did in the mid-1990s with the one you're issuing now. But uh, these three features seem uh, very positive. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Kia? Yeah. K-E-A-L. K-E-A-L. Real Kia. Okay. All right, I'm from Bern. I'm kind of surprised that this meeting isn't being held in Bern because we are the targeted community by what I see here is by having our Bern Highway Department being consolidated and basically being handed over to the county. Uh, at least that's the way I see it. I'd like to see it in a different fashion if it was ever to be a consolidation uh, our highway department does a superb job of, as Mr. Chartier had said, um, it just does a great job of informing us what's going on, why, how, 
and pitchers, you name it. Uh, Mr. Bashwinger happens to be our highway superintendent who's here. Uh, he just does a fabulous job. Um, that being said, I would like to see the county and the state roads, if they were to be consolidated, be put under the heading of burn. Because I think burn does such a good job that we should be the ones who take over the roads in our town. We do a great job, so therefore the state could pay burn for all the taxes that we uh, would be saving. They could pay us. They could pay the town of Burn for doing the job that we do. So that's the only consolidation direction I would like to see. I don't like to see our local uh, workers, uh, elected staff, uh, just being tossed to the wind and uh, being let go. Uh, our, our people do a great job. Yes, I have heard that these, uh, these workers will be merged into the uh, county. That's what I've heard and understood. However, over time, we're not going to have that responsiveness that we have right now. Right now, if, if somebody calls up our highway department, things get done in the town of Bern. We're, we're a local, you know, we're way up in the mountains. You guys don't even want to go up there because we're so far away. So that's, you know, that's why we're coming all the way down here to let our views be heard that we do not support this consolidation in this way. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm Mike McLaughlin. I'm uh, Director of Policy and Research for the County Exec. This is um, a perception that we, we realize is, is difficult. Uh, we, in no, by no means, uh, want this to appear as if there's anything targeted to anybody. All of the ideas that were part of the draft plan and um, some, of the, some of the ideas that have come up since the release of the draft, the draft plan were brought to us by municipalities, um, interestingly enough. As you say, um, specifically, burn was mentioned, and since that mention, perhaps uh, the uh, skids were greased. We've had a few other municipalities bring up these options. Um, all of the plans and the estimates here involve no layoffs, um, even if uh, these tasks were to be taken over, whether it be you know in the direction that you prefer, or as was brought up um, in our municipal meetings you know, uh, staffing is going to be needed to maintain those services. Now, of course, I would say to you that the county will be as responsive to local needs and burn as possible. I'm a fan of the hill towns, uh, and I'm not originally an Albany County resident, so I can say that I have no particular, my loyalty is the county as a whole. Um, but we're going to need uh, to keep staffing around to handle those increased responsibilities, whether it be in that in the direction that you say down to the local level or up to, uh, to the, the county level. Um, and again, I do want to stress, we're still in draft phase right now. We still don't have comments from our county legislature, um, and we still need to hold what will likely be a few meetings with our panel to figure out what they want to opt in on and what they don't want to opt in on. So this still is very preliminary, um, and we don't want to kind of overstate where we are in this process um, in terms of there's another hearing, where there's already been one hearing, and some folks from Bern uh, were there and expressed their, uh, their frustrations. Um, there will be another hearing at the end of this month. Thank you, Mary. August 29th, and that will be in Bethlehem at the town hall. So if it comes up again, there's a possibility, depending on time frames, we're very tight right now, of having another. But um, so far, this has been a consistent message. So we're going to have to look at this pretty closely, OK? Randy Bashinger. Thank you. Um, I'm Randy Bashinger. Burn Highway Superintendent, thank you guys again. I, I was at the last one. Um, it was just kind of strange how it came out the day after we had the first meeting and then this, this showed up because everything was talked about shared services and Tuesday morning I get this and it says consolidation. So it was kind of a surprise. Um, back in 2006, there was a 
shared or a study done. Were you guys the one that did the study? No. No. Well, the study was six hundred thousand dollars savings for the town of Bern to consolidate with the county. At that time, we had seven full timers. We now have six. So I'm not sure how we change four hundred fifty thousand dollars with one employee. I guess my my question is, can you guys tell us where the hundred and fifty thousand dollars would be for the uh, the savings? Um, I know it's preliminary. Sure, I'll tell you. Okay. Your, your supervisor, uh, apparently your town board voted to do a study, study yeah. a new study. And based off the old study, your supervisor estimated it to be 20% of your property tax levy. 20% of your property tax levy equals $151,000. Okay. So it's that simple. Since that time, uh, we have taken a look at the 2006 study. Mm -hmm. Um, now, in the time frame we have, we can't possibly duplicate what that study done. What we're sure. going to try to do is look at what they said those savings were and translate it to your current thing. That hasn't been done yet sure. by us. Right. Uh, but the supervisor has gone through that exercise, and that's where that comes from. It's preliminary. Okay. We want to get more detailed numbers so that we're comfortable with that estimate. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say I've explained to you how we got. Right. Okay. So and I've also explained to you we're not done looking at those numbers. Right. And we would like your input on that. Sure. We, sure. Once we so we're going to take the 2006 numbers, try to translate it to your current budget, and then. We'll ask for your input and for Kevin's input okay. as to whether those numbers are accurate. And all I can say is that we don't have a lot of time to do that, maybe. That's the problem. I, I understand that. My, my whole thing is this: we should have really been involved in this from the very beginning. And then you may have saved some time because now you're going to fight the resistance of, of the town. And uh, the question I have also is, is there going to be a referendum? Sorry, be, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, is there going to be a vote onto this by town um, uh, residents? It's a good point. Yes, look, is there a referendum on all of this? The law, this law that we're doing a study for the county on does not require a referendum. The panel votes the way they want to vote. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean just because a panel votes means everything gets implemented. If there are local laws or rules in place that, you know, there's a town. DPW and it's subject to law, then other things have to happen at the local level. We don't, this is not grant this panel any special legislative authority right. over anyone. Right. It just says this is what we're agreeing to. Now we got to get our communities to do so too. Where they can do it as chief executive officers, then it becomes law. But where there's legal prohibitions and other things that we done locally, you, they're subject to laws. These are, this is not a super overriding authority. Mm -hmm. That's why there's no referendum. Okay. Is that yeah, I understand that. Um, in our town, it's a little bit different. There's a lot of political stuff happening, and, and unfortunately, that's the way the, you know, the world goes. Um, so a lot of people come to me and ask me about if there's going to be a referendum, because they're concerned. Um, they don't feel that they would get the response from the county that, that they would. And we work close with the county. I mean, we, we work close with the county. We work, work close with Knox, uh, Westerville, Rensselaerville, Town of Wright. Uh, New Scotland, Gilderland, um, pretty much every every town around that we, we share already. Uh, we share vehicles, uh, equipment, men, different things, uh, which you know brings up a good point. You had a slide about uh, uh, having a pool of, of equipment. I'm sorry, so, uh, I'm uh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Face. face her. Okay. I, I mean, sorry. We can hear you. Right. And she's got I mean, to translate. Can, so, I so I guess the question, away. what I'm trying to get at, is there was a, there was a, a slide up there uh, showing the uh, the use of, of different equipment in, in towns and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, right now we'll we'll use a, a piece of equipment from another town, and while we have it, if it breaks down, we fix it. Uh, a good example with the county was uh, we used the grade all this past year, and because their union is different, we had to use one of their employees. Well, they got a flat tire on a Tuesday. They finally got the tire done on Friday. So we lost three days. Now, my equipment 
if we had the tire flat Tuesday morning, Tuesday couple hours we'd have a new tire. So it kind of takes the things out. It's it's great idea to be able to use shared equipment, but if the service isn't going to be there, what's what is, what savings do we have? That the shared personnel and shared equipment is one of those areas where municipalities were uh, interested in the program, but had the same concerns that the superintendent response time service. I think we did a very conservative estimation here. Right. And I think if you actually got a program like this, there'd be considerably more savings. But we did it conservatively, I think it's $500,000. Mm -hmm. Basically, we took a recruitment price and said, this is what you don't have to buy. It's like a quarter of it, right? Not even the full price. Right. If the service isn't good, there's not going to be people opting into the program, right? Sure. Folks aren't going to use the program. So I think this program rises or falls by the level of service that folks get. Mm. And it, what we were finding is it's not just a county to town or county to village. In many cases, it's going to be town to town or village to village or village to town, right? Many of the things that are already happening, the sort of on steroids, as we like to call it. Right. So I think we're conservative in our estimation. If the program works, I think you'll see a lot more. But service time, response time, all of those things that you would depend on or demand, you have to see how it really works. We're not unlike other counties. Sometimes I said shared equipment is going to save us $85 million. The county, at least comfort, we have to be comfortable with what we'll put our names on. I wasn't mm -hmm. comfortable with just saying that's the, that's the be all, end all. It's going to save $85 million for people. I wish we home and be happy. Right. We we're very conservative. We want to see it work first before we would be more um, uh, positive towards it. Being, uh, being but it could be a database first of what's available sure. and sure. see what goes on. Now, there was a study that was in the Eltamont Enterprise that, that, did you guys already do the study for burn separately? We, already, we, we haven't even been asked. Okay, so, so that was a misprint then. Because yeah, that, that came in the paper, said that you already did this study. Correct, correct. Okay, because right. I'm like, and in, in, in that makes sense now, because I was under the assumption you guys already did that study. No, just, just for the record, which is important for the Rock Island Sorry. We are working with the county and the panel on their shared services. We don't think it's appropriate right now to work on a specific proposal for a municipality on something that an overall panel has to vote on. We think there's a conflict there, so we haven't engaged in that until after this is done. Okay. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Randy. Randy, I apologize. It's Bath? Bates. I'm sorry? Bates. Bates, okay. Are you comfortable standing over there? No, I'd rather stand there. He'll fix you. I'm sorry. That's a little defense here. My name's Randy Bates. I'm the highway superintendent in town of Rensselaerville. And I wanted to speak of my experience of 40 years in highway maintenance and the value of our local highway departments. I spent 31 years working for New York State DOT. Any number of roles. I also been an adjunct professor at Mohawk Valley Community College, teaching one person plowing statewide. I've spent the last six years as a highway superintendent in the town of Rensselaerville. And I can tell from my experience the value of our local highway departments far surpassed anything that the state or county could do. The accountability we have as highway superintendents is something that's not experienced by the county and by the state. When your neighbors pay your salary, you become accountable. Our highway department is more than potholes and mowing grass. We're a part of the community. Our trucks monitor uh, Albany County's fire and EMS dispatch. If there's a call, our people respond. In the wintertime, there's a plow truck at the, at the house of the fire or the incident before emergency services are there, were there. We respond to ambulance calls. We assist in any way we can. The value of a local highway department is far more than just the dollars and cents of equipment and personnel costs. It's, it's a community service. It's necessary. Uh, Governor Como laments the number of local government agencies. He doesn't know why they exist. I know why they exist. They exist because people want them. They have value and they're important. 
And uh, we can go into numbers, we can go on and on, and we can and just go on and on endlessly. Uh, the thing that troubles me, I was in this room in 2014. I've been at many meetings here about shared services. I recognize some of you who were also at those meetings. And we just produced reports and reports, and you know that became a good basis for this. But suddenly, highway superintendents are excluded. One half of the budgets of all of our hill towns are highway maintenance. And we were excluded from this process, specifically excluded. It, it just makes no sense to me. And uh, I just wanted to uh, share my views. Thank you. Uh, on, the, on the issue of exclusion, the law that was passed required us to talk to the chief executive officer of each town and village and the chief executive officer of each school district. And in the two months that we had to do this, some supervisors, some chief executive officers of the towns and villages had their highway superintendents in on the call, I would say. Most of them did, others did not. It's, we can't tell the chief executive officer of a town or a village who to include when you discuss shared services with them. That's up to the chief executive officer. So, for example, Randy participated in the discussion we had with the Rensselaerville supervisor. So, uh, just what the law requires, what, and, and our inability to tell chief executive officers who to include and what who not to include. Um, and you can take that where you would like to take it. But that's that's the law of why we did what we did. We left it up to the chief executive officer of each municipality, which is what the law requires us to do. Michael Dubuque? I'm, I'm good, thank you. I just thought I'd have a question. Tim Lipper. Thank you. I'll speak clearly for you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Tim Lipper. I'm a resident and employee of the town of Bern. I'm a part-time employee. I do code enforcement and uh, building and zoning administration there. Um, a position that's been consolidated. Uh, it used to be two guys in that job, and now there's one for a lot less than they used to pay the two guys combined. But that's how it works. Um, we're small towns. They're always looking to find places to find money. And I imagine uh, certainly that's why we're here tonight. Um, thank you for the highway superintendents for coming up tonight and being included when they were excluded from the, the early parts of this, this process. Um, I guess that's the checks and balances. The public hearing is where you pick up what you missed. And um, Randy, you are doing a super job in Bern. Uh, thank you for what you do and how you communicate to the residents and uh, spend our tax dollars. Um, the hearing. We have a hearing tonight. It took me 45 minutes to get up here to a town that I'm really unfamiliar with. And it, it probably cost me a couple bucks to get here in some time. But, and we all did. Uh, a lot of people from Bern made the effort to get here. I really think that there should be a hearing in Bern. Those people don't know what this plan is. They haven't heard it. They don't know. It's really fast. And you keep uh, mentioning that they can opt out. We can't opt out of anything because all this plan is is a signature by Kevin Crozier, the town supervisor, and Dan McCoy. And that's it. It's done. There's no, there's hearing. There's three hearings that you're going to go through in a very short period of time. But um, the way I understand this design is it's a signature. Uh, the chief executive officer signs off on it, and we are stuck with it. Um, we are sharing services now. Rensselaerville, Byrne, Knox, Westerlo. Guys that I haven't seen before are working on my road, and I'm like, did we hire a new guy? And it's like, oh, they're, they're sharing services. That, that's the guy from Knox. Uh, we've been doing it, and we've been doing it well, and I think this plan and report 
states that. Somewhere in here, I thought I read that we were doing a pretty good job, as good as we were doing, and we're really not going to benefit by a consolidation. We're sharing services, and it's working. Uh, we are buying all our fuel on state contract and have been for a while. That's not new. We're, we're saving money there. Um, we can't. Part of this plan for the governor is you have to have new ideas and new things have to happen. You can't use all the stuff you've been using, um, state contract fuel and so on and so forth. So our town supervisor has stated that he's going to eliminate part-time employees. Well, I'm a part-time employee. This affects me. This, this is huge. It's a part-time job, but it, it, it adds to my weekly nut, and um, it's, uh, it, it's important to a lot of, a lot, half of our town is part-time employees. The library, the highway, uh, the town parks, they're all part-time. Everybody is. And they don't have a union to protect them. They're at risk for whatever kind of money somebody has to pick up in their next year's budget. Byrne was opposed to consolidation previously at the, the earlier plan, and uh, those people are opposed now. Um, they, they're, they're furious. Uh, I haven't seen anybody yet, but maybe somebody will come up and speak in favor of this. I don't know. It's early. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I'm opposed to this. Thank you for holding a hearing at the last minute, the Hail Mary. And uh, thanks very much. My name is Jennifer Lyons. I am a resident in the town of Bern, and I have some questions in general. And um, you had said, mentioned shared personnel through a centralized process, such as lawyers, et cetera. So if the town of Bern or any town was to use a Albany County lawyer, how would you account for the cost on that? Would, you have to work out a fee arrangement on some level. Right? You would build the town and the town would pay it, sort of? Okay. Or if they want, it depends, right? Sometimes if you want to offer me a lawyer, I'll offer you an engineer, and there's not an actual trading of dollars, but that's left to the municipalities to decide. I don't, we, it's not us to dictate what that should be. That's the concept. That and is that concept also going to be the same for the equipment materials? Um, when you said there was a consolidation of possibly the Albany County and Byrne Department of Public Works, who's in charge? Well, I think that has to be worked out how that arrangement works, right? So that's the next stage. That's not for us to, we're not the implementers. Mm -hmm. We put the plan on the table uh, because that was what was raised by your local government. Um, that would have to be, worked, that arrangement would have to be worked out. Between and who would make that decision? That would be between the county and the town. You mentioned in the robust energy efficiency about residents sharing in also. Can you tell me a little more on that? So, yeah, the CCA, the Community Choice Aggregation, basically is all the municipality, local governments, sign up and say, this energy provider can lower our energy costs 20%. Residents automatically get entered into that because they're part of the town or part of the village or part of the city. But there's choice there. Say you like to go through National Grid, you don't want to go through another party to get your energy services, you can opt out and say, I want to keep with National Grid or mm -hmm. Central Hudson or whoever you use. Sort of like the phone calls we used to get from the people selling the... But this is a different thing because this is something gone through a government process, an RFP process. This isn't some salesman calling you up and saying, I got a great deal for you. It's going through a robust request for proposals and things like mm -hmm. that, right? So there's a process there. We're aggregating all of the costs. That's, that's, that's the big, it's the buying power. When an individual negotiates individually with an energy company, you don't have a lot of right, buying right, power. Right. But when all the municipalities in Albany County yes. negotiate with an energy company, now you could, re, you know, now if the real wait, 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 wait. If the county, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. One at a time. So I'm sorry. Possibly for me to get. So I missed the last few. Oh, okay. What well, I was saying is that um, 
Uh, when all the municipal municipalities and a county negotiates with? <laughs> with an energy company together, they have greater buying power and can get a lower cost. In Westchester, they have reduced energy costs by 20%. So, which, that's pretty significant. And in this plan, we, we estimated it at less than 20%, about 10%, just to be on the safe side. We don't know what the participation will be, mm -hmm. so we will consider it. So, adding on to that question, if a municipality opts in, the residents would be able to opt in? They opt in, they can opt out. Once your local government opt, opts into the program, all the residents are entered into the program, but they can opt out. That's how it works, it's an opt out program for residents. Now, if a municipality opts out, can the residents still opt in through the county? No. no. Okay. Thank you. Um, and that's not the plan, that's what the state regulations say. You mentioned the retrofitting on the LED lights. Would that be a contract job out, or would you have the local towns do it? Well, it's interesting. What we're, there's been a lot of discussion around LED lights, and also we're talking about other energy efficiencies. Sometimes it's not just buying the solar panel. There's trouble with hooking the solar panel up to the grid, right? Utility companies don't want to put that source of power back onto the grid because it saves cost for you, which takes away profit for them, right? So the county would help facilitate working with, the, with, with national grid utilities, say, you have to do this, or by the way, we're going to use our leverage of the county power with all these local governments behind us to say, if you don't do this solar project, we're taking away all of your costs somehow, right? So there's just, there's just governmental power behind that piece. Then on the LED, there is, it gets complicated, right? Most of street lights and other things are owned by the utilities. A lot of local governments were at one time leasing back from the utility to, to put the LED lights on. There's been some movement to just buy outright those uh, street lights, which sometimes a village can't do on its own, but if you pull all of those costs together, there could be savings. So you can buy it outright from utility companies to get them out of the business, right? Because they're not being helpful. Mm -hmm. actually harming the process is one piece. The second piece which was raised by some, we had an energy forum where folks from across the county came. Uh, we had representatives of the New York Power Authority, the Public Service Commission, uh, NYSERDA, which is the energy agency. Um, there were some issues where some municipalities, it's different, right? Changing an LED system, a light bulb, is a different type of process. That is a more expensive actual process to use personnel and other things. There is some talk about using shared personnel among, around, across the county to help with that, so there's not a great cost to a local government that, that may not have those personnel to do those types of things. So that's an area where it's something new. We don't know what the savings will be. But if you have crews at different parts of the, instead of relying on the utility company, the, company, okay. the government can work together. Because not often, right? These, these lights last for years <laughs> before they burn out. So okay. there's been a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on in there, working with utility companies, purchasing of the equipment itself, maintenance of those facilities, those are all cost savings by just aggregating those services. Okay, um, one couple more questions, I'm sorry. Um, you mentioned uh, consolidation of the workers' comp and liability, but isn't that through the state now? And then also with all these consolidations on those types of things in the health, what about your unions? So the, on the healthcare consortium, and then Tom will correct me where, where I'm wrong, because I'm often wrong. Um, the health rules, there's like three or four different ways of doing it. You can't aggregate a collective bargaining agreement, so that's not part of this. The benefits to the employee stays the same. The co-pays, all those things stay the same. What changes is, on the, it's behind the scenes, right? It's your collective purchasing power as a government. I have 30 employees, your costs go up because you only have 30 employees. If I have 5,000 employees, all of a sudden the health care and the insurer is going to say, okay, we'll give you a better price because I don't want to lose 5,000 employees. That's what we're talking about. It's enormously complicated right now because state law is enormously complicated. Mm -hmm. and everybody should talk to the assemblyman before he leaves today <laughs> and talk to him about it. Um, actually, it's not the assembly, but he's been actually trying to be very helpful on that front, but there's insurance regulations and other types of things. Even that we're, the more you actually get into it, the more difficult mm -hmm. it becomes. 
Um, and we're, we're trying to work through some of those areas about how to aggregate those costs for folks because the smaller municipalities are the ones that actually lose out in the okay. end. And we want to make sure they are able to qualify. That's the right. health care. And BOCES is a model on some levels, but not a model for some local governments. And by the way, not all the school districts in our county are in a BOCES program. Well, let's get them into a program. Let's leave the county program then to lower those overall costs. Because why just pay extra money for nothing? Let's get the insurance companies to lower their overall costs in the community with the same care and the same benefits. The same rule applies for workers' compensation and uh, the, the liability insurance and other things. It's how do you aggregate that overall cost. If you're a small municipality, you have 20 employees, your worker comp costs are going to be higher. We're trying to see if a consortium, a consortium for each of those areas works. We're not certain that we can get to those savings right now. But that's something we'll leave open for future consideration if we can't finalize it by September 15th because it's enormously mm -hmm. complicated, mm -hmm. as everybody who deals with these issues know. And we don't want to oversell, and the county executive don't oversell. So some communities actually, in other parts of states, put forward proposals to lower. One proposal in the county, which we're not going to name, said they're going to lower their workers' comp cost $3.5 million this year. I don't know how that's actually mathematically possible before you actually create a consortium. But we're going to work with some of those issues and see if we can come. That takes consensus building. That takes working together with local municipalities to see what works and doesn't work. Okay. Two questions. Two. for me to add. I didn't fail today, which is good. I'm sorry. Two, two quick questions. Is this PowerPoint presentation available to the public? Oh, yeah. We'll give it to, we'll give it to the county and they can post it if they're okay with that. Okay. Um, one other last question. You had said that um, you mentioned your dates of 8-1 and 9-15. What is the drop dead date for the municipalities to drop to opt out? I think you have to. September 15th is where it you is opt out of a certain proposal. And we'll work. I know the Probably the day before September yeah, 15th yeah. because we have to submit it to the state. On the 15th. So on the 15th. So what date would it be then? The 14th. Let's say the 14th, just to be on the same side. John's even saying maybe a little earlier than that. And uh, my last thing is just an opinion. So you, you've been very eloquent in stating how you're looking at all avenues and, and stuff of that sort. However, you then stated by law, the only person you need to reach out was, was the chief, chief executive officer of municipality, even though a lot of these shared services do involve the highway. So should you ever do this again, I would think that you could follow the law, but it might be in your best interest to include the highway supervisors who have a huge say in this whole thing, including your wastewater treatment supervisors and any of those people. Because you're right, most supervisors do include their people, but then you do get into the political issues in some towns where there's heads butting and they do not include the people who are instrumental in what goes on in our town. It's a, it's a, it's a fair point. What we tried to do, because it was a pretty condensed timeline, we became involved middle of May, end of May, right? So it's not a lot of time even just to organize calls. We rely on folks to put together bigger groups of people for each municipality. Now, we didn't want to wade into local politics. Unfortunately, politics always plays a role. If we had to do it all over again, we would talk to every trustee, every employee, right? This is two months. Some of these, you guys are talking about some proposals, some of these plans that have been, it took them two years to just do a highway plan. This is two months, two and a half months to do a countywide plan. So we were mindful of that. And hopefully we knew there would be public hearings and other things to try to get as much in okay. input as possible. We were relying on the public hearings to get input where we didn't get input in other places. It's difficult for the county to tell another chief elected official what to do. Again, not pointing fingers, yeah. I understand your position. Yeah, okay. But thank you for your time. We understand. And Thank you very much. Ed, Thank you. Um, this tonight, the previous hearing and the following hearing are critical parts of the draft process. I mean, we can't say the word draft enough for tonight. Mm -hmm. So your input, everyone's input is valuable part of this process. You know, think of this as being in pencil and we're gravitating towards getting it in pen. So the input is very valuable tonight. Thank you for your time. Can I just make one comment real quick? Uh, you're, you, you have to get in there. Okay. Randy Bashley, and we are going up. I'm going to ask to make it simpler. Okay. If there's anyone else that wants to make a follow up comment, if you would come back and just resign. Randy Bashley. Yep. Thank you. 
Address. Go up. Okay. Well, you can do it from there. All right. Because she can see you better. Yeah. Okay. That's really simple. <laughs> Just remember, since 2006, our supervisor has wanted to delete the highway department. So this isn't something that just popped up. He's had problems with three past superintendents. Now all of a sudden it's easy just to get rid of them. So just want to make that point. Robin Mazaros. I'll try to you. I'm Robin Mazaros. I'm a Burn resident. I'm, I'm completely opposed to a consolidation. Um, I keep hearing that we had a condensed schedule. Um, can I ask why? Why? Why wasn't this done earlier? This is the law. It, the law was passed in April. It was signed in mid-April. By the time the Department of State got their documents out, it was May. So counties would have been started to do like this. Just we, we came in May 15th. We actually started working before it was official with the county. That, that's why. I mean, it literally happened that fast. And this has to be decided this year. Well, that's actually something I wanted to mention. So, if everyone kind of takes into consideration everything Jim and Tom set up to this point, and all of the numbers that you've seen on the slides, and everything that we've received since our previous hearing, and that we're receiving at this hearing, we're going to have to do a financial analysis of all these options, okay? And this has to be done by September 14th, we need to make sure that these numbers are solid because Rockefeller is then going to be responsible for what they call certifying the numbers. And then that basically locks in what those numbers mean. And we're going to have to, for all intents and purposes, guarantee the taxpayer that we'll be saving this amount of money. So the amount of change that can happen to this plan by the time it's finalized are significant. Okay? So, um, there's, there's a, a lot of things that likely will change, but these are the things that we have right now. Also, on the issue of whether they have to get it in this year, do you want me to explain yeah. that, Mike? Is that okay? Um, no, but it's, it's the determination of the shared services panel, which is made up of every school district superintendent and every chief elected official of every municipality in Albany County. It's a pretty big panel. They could vote down a plan, and uh, then the state law requires us to continue to work and submit another plan by, uh, by, by September 15th of 2018. So, no, we don't have to have it done, but we mu the county must submit to the panel before September 15th a plan that they must vote on. And the only way it doesn't move forward is if that panel votes it down, which they could do. The downside of voting it down, the governor will reimburse Counties and municipalities, 50 50, uh, dollar for dollar savings. Let's say in one year we save a million dollars. The county and the locality that did the shared service, all right, so if you don't take part in it, then you can't get any of the savings. Would, the state would give them $500,000 to split in that year. You can't get that money in the second year. So you would lose out on the matching fund unless the legislature changes the law and ends, which could happen. But that's the law as it is. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Um, I just, I guess, I just want to make it well known that um, you know this this plan had come up before um, regarding consolidation, and it was voted down. The people in Burn did not want it. The fact that we're even approaching something that was presented in our town meeting as we were looking at shared services that is now being listed as a consolidation for our town is unacceptable. Unacceptable. And it's not right. And it's all being left in the hands of one person. There are 2,800, almost 2,800 people in the town of Bern 
and the fact that we may have no say in what happens to our highway department is unacceptable in my eyes. I pay taxes. How do I not have a right? And that, I think, is just very concerning to me, that we've got one person who gets to wield all that power and takes it out of our hands. And what we agreed to in the town, or what our town board agreed to, or at least I thought they agreed to, was to do a study on shared services, not consolidation. So I'm done. Thank you. Peter Becker, Burn District Chief. I believe the town has six employees. Well, I know we have six employees. Four of them belong in the fire department. You want to eliminate them or volunteer? We cover 90 square miles. Colony covers what? Anybody know? Good answer. Colony, I believe, is covers less than five or six per department square miles. For me to get a department out and as Randy would say, Randy Bates, even Randy Bashwinger, you get a call at 3 o'clock in the morning. Any one of these guys are out. Randy's out plowing. He's got a guy out plowing. We all listen to our scanners, our pages. They're out plowing. I know that when I get to care, if I've got a fully involved house fire or I've got somebody down with a broken leg or whatever happens at 3 in the morning, I know I can get there. You're not going to happen with the county. That is so not going to happen. I'm done. I'm going to get I just have a couple of questions and the first one is how does the um, the areas of, of proposed savings and the dollar value really compare with other counties and that's process right now. Is there any sharing across counties going on? Any discussion to see if there's leverageability that other counties are doing? That many municipalities in Albany County already are sharing ensembles across borders, right? <coughs> if you're a resident of one county, you know, Green County, it doesn't mean just because there's a line there, okay, I'm a town, you're a town, we don't talk to each other. A lot of that is happening already. Many counties have done things together. There's actually a regional, um, uh, it's called a mega program. There's 11 counties involved on energy. This law doesn't go to that. We hope naturally these things are already happening. Mm -hmm. Under this proposal, it doesn't because it's not part of the purview or the scope right. of the law. But those things are happening. But my point is more the question of every county under what the governor passed how to go and look at consolidation of services. Is there anything happening where each of the counties are looking at things, that there's, there's conversation across them in this process? We, I think the Association of Counties has held That's meetings. what my question, yes. yes. They've had meetings, and the Department of State has also had joint meetings with all the counties that go through some of these ideas. We are part of the Albany County Project, so we have been part of those directly but yes, some of those some of those discussions were happening. Okay. Have been happening. Yes. Okay. For example, on the health insurance consortium idea, that has been a common theme. Well, that was my question. Is there other themes? Across many counties. There's been a common theme. Common theme across many county plans. Yeah, and that was really where the heart of my question was going. Because one would assume consolidation's been looked at multiple times, and there are pockets of here's where we can do, here's where we can save here's where we can save. But is any anything new coming up as people are starting to go from the bottom up? Which I think this is a little bit different at, in taking that take. Yeah, the bottom the in, the one area we were harping on a little bit the energy space is sort of in a bottom up thing. It's kind of complicated, so it's like a newer area that many municipalities are focused on. I think Albany County, quite frankly, in this proposal, has done a better job than some other counties. So hopefully this can provide a model uh, for other counties. 
Um, and some of the IT services, some of the discrete services, those things um, are sort of emerging from the bottom up because technology is changing so rapidly, it's hard for anybody to keep up with it. Um, and that's not a county for the local governments or the local governments to the county or the state to the county. That's like everybody trying to figure out what's the best way of approaching. You buy a computer system and it's obsolete sure. the minute you get it. So a lot of those discussions are happening. They're bubbling up from the bottom about what the needs are for each community. Okay. Thank you. The other question I have is, um, I, I checked the, um, the report online. It's very high level. Is there any way to get to the next level down, how you're deriving some of these numbers? Yes, that's going to be the final report. Some of this is because it was literally a two-month process. We're doing estimates. That's why we're very conservative. You can see in our footnotes how we got at some of those estimates. Right. You'll see a more detailed final version based on the data that we received. And the law requires uh, a specific format uh, that we must follow and calculate. We have to actually calculate a specific percentage decrease in the collective property tax base. So okay. we have to add everybody's property tax levy together, add our savings together, and do that percentage savings. That's The law requires it to be in a specific format, and it will be it has to be in that format, otherwise it won't be acceptable to the state. Last question, and it was based on the comments that were here. I mean, I'm assuming the proposal was to take it the, at the municipality, particularly with the highway stuff, and move to the county. Would you look at the possible savings of moving from a consolidation at the county and instead consolidating at the local so you can continue to have basic personalized services and eliminate some of the county cost? Well, we're looking at everything, so nothing's off the table until someone tells me it's off the table, which is a good thing. And in many cases, this hasn't been about the county providing the service. On some level, it's been the local community sharing amongst themselves, which has been an interesting thing, and including the school district, I think has actually been a pretty important part of that conversation. I wasn't really being tongue-in-cheek when I said school districts we're struggling with cherry pickers and why yep. to spend that cost. I mean, they did their every dollar makes counts, right? They said I'd rather spend five thousand dollars on a program or books or something as opposed to a machine that right down the street the town has. Right. So right. a lot of that is actually happening. It's not actually the county for local government. It's been the local governments themselves banding together on things. And some of it is just uh, memorializing in an official process with Lots of what's going on. I mean, we said right up front, you've done a lot in Albany County, which is a testament to the county, right? right. So we're already start, you're already starting at a more robust position than some other counties have done already. Okay, thank you. Jim Lippert. Thank you. There's a, a section in the, the proposal, the draft. Um, there's a section in the Tim, Tim Lippert from Town of Burn, employee. Um, uh, under the barriers to the shared services, the pro uh, talking about the pro property tax cap. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? It's it very kinda... complicated. So, yeah. uh, what I'll say is, is that um, when a, and this basically comes from the town supervisor of Bethlehem, okay, who actually uh, found that when he consolidated a service, uh, I think it had to do with consolidation of ambulance districts in that town. Um, the way the state property tax worked, the savings that he achieved from that were not allowed to count. In other words, he couldn't take it off his tax levy. And there's a disagreement between his interpretation of the law and how the Department of State uh, the Department of State, New York State Department of State, interprets the law. And uh, Senator McDonald, who had to leave, was trying to mediate that dispute, but to no avail. So it is the perception of supervisors that that part of the cap is a discouragement to shared services, and that all savings that accrue to the town when they share services should 
be, in essence, deducted from your cap. That's the best I can explain it. The cap is a very complex mechanism that, um, you know, that is hard to explain in a group like this. But is that, you know, there's a dispute between supervisors in the state over the meaning of the law and how it, I think, in particular, looks at consolidation of ambulance districts and how that savings is accrued to the cap. And uh, so since something that McDonald was not able to mediate that dispute, we would try to mediate it again. Um, it's not one of the, you notice it was the last bullet. <laughs> okay, so it's a pretty technical one. There are many other more serious state regulations that we discuss. For instance, uh, if you have 50 or less employees, you must be community rated um, as relates to health insurance. That has a lot more impact in terms of cost to local governments than what we just discussed. Or a school district can't uh, put a solar installation outside of the school district boundary, uh, even if the school district doesn't have any place where it could put it. Uh, that doesn't seem to make sense. And again, stops what I would say more urban school districts from being able to leverage that um, savings as it relates to solar. So I wouldn't get hung up on that technical aspect. It's a small thing, but it, it means a lot to certain supervisors, which is why we included it in the report. Thank you. Paul, I hope that helped. Paul Bergdorf. Um, hi, I'm Paul Bergdorf. I'm one of the county legislators. I really came here to, to listen tonight. But I, I got one big question, sort of a macro question, as to how this all fits together. You, you've talked about $6.8 million of potential savings, of which I don't remember it was either 3.5 or 3.3 was real, you know, was like sort five. of 2.5 was conceptually agreed to, right. and another 4.3. Whatever. When you put your report stop, 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 together, stop, 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 stop. When you talk over him, I can't hear. So okay. he's you don't want to hinder conversation. It, the, the actual savings is two point five million in the plan, conservative estimate that's based on the data you receive, with a potential of a net of four point three million dollars in savings to get to six point eight million. What do you say? Okay. Um, Will you, in the next level of the report, have a spreadsheet that shows how much of that is a county savings, how much is a town of colony savings, how much is a north colony school district savings, and a south colony school district uh, savings? Because I think, while it sounds like a lot of money to a individual homeowner uh, who is only going to get little pieces of this, and I'm not quite sure uh, what the aggregate benefit will be in terms of, of tax reduction. Will that, will that become clearer to us as to the benefit of this by community, uh, by county, by, by town, city, and school district? As much as we can, yes, some of it is always an estimate until the actual. But the state law, we're going to do that, yes. The state law actually doesn't require that, strangely enough. They require the total number of taxpayers in a county, which is like 157,000 total taxpayers. And you divide that by the savings. It's a blunt, rough issue, right? So I'm just dividing everybody, which is not exactly what it is. We'll try to provide as much detailed analysis like we're doing now. Some of it, if you look at our footnotes, is very detailed. So yes. So I'm in North Colony, or I'm in the town of Colony. They they agreed to sign it. It's opted to five more proposals. They think it's their savings. We divide by those taxpayers. That's what we'll try to do. Yes. So so I guess what I'm saying, if you live in a town or a city that is participating robustly in shared savings you're going to get 
your percentage of shared savings, or is everybody going to, in the county, share on a per capita basis? The law, I have to go back and check. It's unclear. The law says it has to be the total taxpayer in the county divided by the savings, which is different than what you're talking about. We'll be able to do, give us much back of the envelope details of that. I'm participating. But I, guess, but I guess what I'm saying is the law, the law for the match basically says everybody in the county divided by the total savings, regardless of everybody's opting. If you're opting in, say you're in Altamont, everybody's opting into everything, and then most of the savings are there for those residents. It, the, the law doesn't actually require that type of division, really. But we always try to provide as much of that as possible. No, but my, my question is if you opt into nothing, and everybody else opts into other things. Do your people see nothing? The That's state? correct. Right. Yes, they see nothing. Okay. Unless there's a county benefit. In which case, it's county level. Well, well that's, that's what I said. If there, if there are multiple layers of an Excel spreadsheet, yes. there's a county share. In your example, you live in the town colony. In your example, you live in the town colony, and there's a savings to the county then you would have a benefit because your county tax levy would be impacted. But if the benefits to the town of Colony and you don't opt in, then there is no benefit. Okay. You just add to that if it's benefit to the town. That's why you're not going to see. If, I'm sorry, okay. if you're not going to see. You're going to see my card. Trying to figure out how the pieces fit together. One of the limitations it's on, is it may be very difficult for us to get the data that we need. And I can tell you that at this date, we do not have the data that we need to make the estimate that you asked for, Paul. And whether we will be able to get that data from the local governments in time to make that kind of estimate is challenging. Okay? And to date, we don't have the data to make the spreadsheet that you suggested. Partial, like yeah. that. Yeah. It's only partial. And, and uh, like anything else, you, you, we may have to do some blunt estimates as guests when you try to get to that lower level. Is that? I'm trying to understand how it fits together. I understand yeah. the limitation. Yeah. Have you asked for that data? Yes. yes. Okay. Have we asked for that data? We asked for the data, the local data. <laughs> Sorry. We can't have, we can't have yeah. questions from the audience. <laughs> but did you want to? We were asked whether we have requested the data necessary to create the spreadsheet that Mr. Bergdorf requested. Yes, we have. But we recognize the difficulty of municipalities providing that data in a short time frame. Here's how it even gets more difficult in the aggregate theory of tax savings. And some counties aren't doing it this way, they're just doing it overall savings and considering all tax county savings. You do an energy program. You're sharing personnel to get a savings from the county and the local government. You're a local government, you're a local ta taxpayer as well as a county taxpayer. And how do you figure out which portion of this, the county tax portion where everybody benefits, or where do you figure out which local portion is the local portion? That gets really confusing really fast, but we're gonna do as much as we can to make sure you can see as much detail behind it and that's why even in this preliminary report, we tried to lay out in footnotes or in our end notes exactly how, where we could, got where we got, we put it down. And where we couldn't, we weren't going to make it up and put TV. I mean, we weren't trying to say what we did down. Some municipalities just added numbers. So. But it gets complicated because you're the same taxpayer in the county, in the village, in the town, in the school district, and it could be a program where you're actually sharing a benefit, how do you then allocate that benefit among that same taxpayer for the same savings? 
in each municipality. That's a. I will say that I think that Albany County has the best possible people in the state to help us make that determination. It's not just, Jim and I are pretty good at what we do, but Jerry Benjamin at the Benjamin Center at SUNY New Falls is probably the best expert in the state on this kind of stuff, and he is working with us. So we, it's my view, we'll do better than most on that issue. Um, but there are limitations. Mark Grimm. I try to talk slow. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mark Grimm. I'm a county legislator from Gilderland. And uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. I know you have a lot of things to do. I do want to get some clarity on, on the burn issue as to what opt-in actually means. Does it mean the chief executive officer can decide for a town or the town board? Or does that would include a, a highway superintendent who's an elected official separate? How does a town opt in? Well, the law says the chief executive of the town does the vote on the shared services panel. If local law requires a, another action to be taken by, let's say, a town board, then the local law cannot be superseded. So, a chief elected official could agree to and convince the other members of the panel to agree to study the consolidation of the Burn Highway Department with the county. But, if local law requires the town board to vote on that, that cannot be superseded by his decision. Yeah, I mean, it's rare that a supervisor can act alone. And on, ultimately, the, the supervisor is one vote on the town board out of five. This, I've been I, on the town board. I, I know, this yeah. does not grant any new authority to anyone. Right. Right. What it says is, if you already have the authority, I can enter into an energy contract, maybe. But that doesn't mean I can get rid I can't get, if there was a proposal to say, we don't like the town board anymore. So I'm voting to opt out of the town board. It doesn't mean just because you say it, it means it happens. You don't have the new authority. There's a rule governing that. That still is in effect until the local law is passed. So the county, they'll do whatever the municipality wants to do, but it's really up to the town to determine on their own. And the, the, I think the burn issue is with the supervisor, frankly. You know, but that's up to the people burned it. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, so it comes interesting things. I'm a little, I've read the report, and, and I, by the way, I love this process. Albany County, I see Chairman Ward back there. We've been working on this for, for a long time, and we've made a lot of success. And I'm glad that, that we're moving the, the, the ball forward here. But I, I'm concerned that in, the, um, in making municipalities smaller, we make the county government bigger. And I see there's a couple, for example, payroll you mentioned in the report. Well, maybe we could consolidate payroll and then have an office of payroll in the county government. I think there was a couple other instances where there was the, the possibility of creating another office in the county government. Could you speak to that? Um, as relates to payroll, uh, some specific municipalities, and I'll say the city of Albany is one of them, in particular wanted to consolidate their payroll operation with the county. May most municipalities uh, we're not interested in that. Most municipalities that contract out their payroll currently, uh, let's say to ADP or to Paychex, um, we're more interested in the county having a centralized contract where you might be able to get that service for less. Yeah, and that's what I want to talk about. Instead of shifting government control from the local municipality to county government, why can't we do more in terms of the, uh, uh, going to private vendors with the, uh, with the collective buying power that you would have? And, and that's, I'm yes. hoping that's part of the conversation because, you know, these private vendors, they are paying taxes in Albany County, and, uh, you know, if we can do a business with a private vendor in Albany County, that may be the way to save money. Uh, absolutely, and the report recognizes and strongly encourages that. And Based on our conversations with most municipalities, there was more interest in centralized contracts than moving 
responsibilities from a local government to the county, except in certain circumstances. The city of Albany was very much interested in the consolidation of the payroll operation. Um, and, that's, and that's what they want to do. That's, that's fine. what they want I mean, to do. I mean, because there, there is a concern that uh, local control will be in, in, infringed here. But ultimately, this is about opting in and doing what you think is in the best interest of your town. Now, I understand at Burn, there's a difference of opinion. What's the best method? But that's up for Burn to determine. And by the way, whatever Burn determines, the county will do. But there is a great a suggestion today. We, we think of uh, like the highways, the county taking over highway. But why couldn't the towns, for example, plow the county roads or the state roads? Because they're already there. So I think when we talk about shared services, that's an interesting aspect that municipalities taking over for the bigger governments, who, by the way, are more inefficient. The more you go to the Albany, the more you go to Washington, the more inefficient you get. I think you're going to see a mix, but we were actually got back examples was a mix of expertise. Some municipalities had more expertise than others in certain things, and yeah. I think there's going to be more just sharing of that more formally. So it's not top down, it's really, it's actually, it's co-equals on some level of sharing the knowledge. And I think there's been, in the report, most of the very few examples of actual consolidation. That's if the local government, put a side burn about whose version of local government. Yeah. But Albany County, the city of Albany wanted to give up some things. Fine, but mostly what you saw was the county being the facilitator yeah. of the activity more yes, so yes. than the director yes. of the activity. And I think that's important. Governments really don't work well together. They really don't. And this is why this dialogue is really important. Because people are going to want to buy in to this if they see their neighbors saving money. And that's, we don't want to hit anybody over the head. We want to say, geez, I want a piece of the action because we got a better way of doing it. The actual fact is, in Albany, governments actually do work pretty well together on the whole on some areas. This is to take that to a scale, but someone has to organize it, right? Contracts, yeah. personnel yeah. services, equipment, the county will do that and help facilitate those things that are going on in some parts of the community across the board. Have, any, have you discussed, one of the biggest problems we have is uh, state, state mandates. I mean, when you talk about uh, saving money and working more efficiently, and you could speak to the state mandates there, um, has there been any discussion about how collectively we can speak with the political voice to reduce the mandates that drive counties and towns and villages crazy. The law doesn't, doesn't allow for that. Doesn't, I wouldn't say it doesn't allow. We identified legal barriers to shared service. And we, the, the state has a format. The format says we can include in the report discussions about legal barriers to, to shared services. It doesn't really provide us with a forum about take the Medicaid mandate off of us, for example, meaning the biggest state mandate. Well, well maybe you could do it informally, because you, there's a lot of great ideas in those rooms that you're conducting these meetings. And, and again, uh, we asked what were barriers to shared services of every chief elected official in the county, as well as every superintendent. And Every idea that they gave us is reflected in this report. If there are other ideas, they should be submitted to us so we can include it. It, it, it. There has been that discussion, and actually what it's represented is a more in-depth discussion and analysis where people didn't actually know, they thought it was a different problem. This 50 person, the health consortiums, there's always this prohibition on 50 employees or less, right? Yeah. Community grading, which made it cost prohibitive. Well, then you ask the question, which we're guys that just ask the question that the people are raising. Is it a state law? Well, no one can actually answer what it was. Is it a law? Is it a regulation? We come to find out that the, Depart the State Department of Financial Services may be able to promulgate a regulation to undo that. Well, just because of that, that's a mandate discussion. Just because we're having that discussion on the ground, may actually necessitate change at the state level to change that rule. So exactly. those things have been enormously helpful. It gets more complicated when people say, one man's mandate's another man's labor right, right? So, and those types of bigger issues, there wasn't real agreement. But certain things like that, that has opened the door to, or even the tax cap. Everybody assumed if you consolidated services, it would lead to a 
benefit under the tax cap, not a yeah. perversion of the tax cap. Yeah. I think that could lead to a change potentially. So those things are actually. Yeah, and the happening. report speaks that the state, yeah. the state managers are getting away right. of actually shared services. So those have been but helpful. I want to say, Mary, is, the, is, the, is this online, isn't it, on the county website or this report? They just go to Albany County? Yeah. yeah. If anybody wants to read the report. Okay. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And our final speaker, uh, follow up, Robin Pizarro's. Try to make this quick. <laughs> um, just as a follow-up, <laughs> Rob Mazar is a New York resident. <laughs> um, just a quick follow-up, uh, solar farms not allowed in burn. Um, uh, the overall savings is for our consolidation is $76 per taxable parcel. Um, again, not really huge, at least not in my eyes. <laughs> um, and then finally, you have to sign off, my understanding, correct? Um, we, you sign we, off we, on... The, the government itself has to certify. I don't have any certification. Not you sorry, but the county signs up with the local, with the panel, yes. Okay. So you sign off on this. Uh, we run it for a year, and we hate it. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for the town of Bern. The residents are miserable. Then what? What happens? I just want it on record. What happens to the people then? How do we get our equipment back? How do we get our town building back? Any of that. That all needs to be thought of. And I would hope that come September 15th, part of this, <laughs> that you actually have all the details worked out when it comes to employment, um, equipment, overall savings to the taxpayers. I hope all of that is worked out because I can guarantee I'll be questioning things. <laughs> Thank you all.